Oh. Excuse me. Hello everybody, welcome back and welcome to Mad Ferret Studios, Boudicca here. So we are back into the Cursed Forest. And this one actually saved. The file didn't go corrupt, thank god. So, let us continue on and see where this episode's adventure takes us and what more screams and jump scares we can have. Nothing's flying out at me. Nothing's gonna scare me. Cross mm, that bridge. Oh, bloody hell! Ah. Um, hi? She's so terrifying, but yet I think she just saved my life. What's that in the distance? Oh, we must be getting close. Yep. Wow. Still watching out for them bear traps. Well, another aspect of the settlement.
I love the rain effect on the camera. We sure where she actually somebody looks happy. Alright, where am I at? So oh settlement. Oh, we must be getting close then. Alright, let's go light this brazier. Is there anything in here we need to know about? traps dropping from the trees okay we don't good all those years of playing zelda and skyrim a little bit closer look at the settlement Oh my god, that deer! Where the hell are you at? Nice relaxing 
picnic by the lake. So we just came from that way. Ah, here we go. Well, something's triggered the traps, which is fine by me. Okay. Oh. I see what it's talking about. Secrets. I don't want to have secrets. Sometimes we, when we share our secrets with people, it makes us closer and our bonds stronger, but some secrets create doubt and destroy trust. My father has many secrets. One day I was walking in the settlement and saw a boy looking at me from the window. He looked only 12 years old. He looked very sad. I wanted to cheer him up. I smiled and waved to him, but he just closed the curtains and went away. Something made me curious. This boy was very young, but his eyes looked like a grown man's. I started to visit that place more often. I wanted to see the boy again, but my father found out about it and became angry and forbade me to come close to that house again. But his warning just raised my curiosity. One day, one day I saw how my father entered that boy's house. He, never, he looked unhappy. He wasn't there too long, and soon enough he came out with a woman I'd never seen before. Who is that kid, and how is my father connected with this woman? Secrets around my father are mounting. Obvious answers come to my head, but I try to ignore them. Upon, reflex, upon reflection, they would explain my mother's sadness, sudden sadness. Ooh, has Daddy been busy on the side procreating? All right, whose idea was it to put the damn crystal in a bird nest? What is this? Oh, come on. Oh, for the love of Pete. All right. Ooh, there's that shadow thing again. Yeah, I see you. Don't freaking jump out at me or anything. Oh, creepy ass thing. Oh, look! A hole! No. Not going there. Alright. Alright. 
Time to go back down and get that crystal because we need it. Bear trap is set off. Don't have to worry about it. Going to do a Skyrim. Jump! Jump! Oh, yay, our scarecrow is gone. That bodes well, doesn't it? Or something I should know about. Getting closer. At least nothing threw it off the cliff this time. Excuse me? No, not playing with you. Not playing with you. What do you want? Oh my god, disgusting! Oh, that's nasty! Ew. Oh my god, get me out of here. I'm not down that way. That is wrong. Regarding crystals, during my exploration I found some strange crystals. They glow strongly in the dark and have incredibly unique structural composition. While I was collecting them, I thought only of how much I could sell the strange rocks for. Uh, Hubie, uh. Thank goodness I collected them. They became my salvation. The darkness in this place can easily kill you. Even a few seconds without light and you will hear voices, feel their eyes following you from deep in the shadows, even catch a glimpse of their evil smiling faces. In the darkness, sanity flows from you like water through a sieve. Trapped in the suffocating darkness, I remembered the crystals and took one in my hand, but they were too dim to penetrate the shadows. I felt a breath on the nape of my neck, and all my hair stood on end. I dropped frantically to the ground, searching around, trying to find something to fend myself with. I picked up what felt like a stick. I used the crystal's light as a makeshift flashlight. From its dim light, I saw that I picked up some kind of scepter. It was hollow and the perfect size to put the crystal in. Following my instincts, I placed the gem into the crevice, and at once the crystal's light beamed brighter, it made the darkness run off. The scepter became weighed down by the energy. I couldn't take it with me, I pushed, so I pushed it into the ground. As I explored, I found more. I tried to stay as close to them as possible. It is the only way to fight off the darkness. 
Really? So we've gotten, what, three crystals so far? My Skyrim senses were tingling. Oh, tea party set. Interesting. Nothing up here? Okay then. Oh, what are you? <coughs> oh, so am I missing a crystal? I guess so. Hmm. I've been up there. Listen. Okay, there's not one up here.
Yeah, I definitely wouldn't be there. That leads down to the lake. Is there something up here I missed? It has to be down yonder. Am I going to have to Google this? This takes you to the lake. Okay, it has to be here somewhere.
Oh wait, is it up this? Can we go up this cliff? Oh! Okay, now I know what I was- No! Oh! Yeah, this is not precarious or anything. You can really see it now. Plush Hope. I remember that day, the day when my, when my mother gave him to me. In an instant, this plush bear became my favorite toy. He was always near me. When my mother was gone, this toy had a new meaning for me. With him, I always remembered how my mom loved and took care of me. This toy became my eternal memory of her. After my dad changed, this teddy bear became my comfort and my ray of light. But near my 18th birthday, my teddy bear was lost. I don't understand how it happened. I was always very careful with him. This toy was always near me. My father didn't even want to listen about my supplication to help find him. He was too busy with the problems that he felt more important. I felt that someone had took this teddy bear from me and didn't want me to find him. I lost not just a toy of this teddy. I lost all the warm feelings that this toy represents. I'm still hoping to find it, but more days are passing, and the more I have a feeling that I will probably never find it again. It feels that everything happening around me is not going to change as it has before. Ah, there's our missing crystal. Back down we go. Excuse me. Ah! God damn it. <gasps> Crazy thing. Yeah, you're not creepy or anything. Jesus. out of here now. All right, leaving. We are leaving. Go. Oh, wow. Looky here. Have a look. We're 
We're getting closer. It's like, don't let me fall in another pit. Oh, Jesus. Girl. Oh, that is pretty. Look at that! Oh, it's coming from there! I guess. False brazier. Okay. Okay, I see. So that's where we came in at. Right back, guys. Okay, sorry about that. My candle I had burning was a smoking. Nope. Possession and fail. Soon I will be able to finish the reverse ritual, but something's wrong. I think I've made a mistake. Oh my gosh. Ah, my nap time. I can feel my will becoming weaker. It is like something 
is making me follow a scenario that was already written. All my feelings of superiority, joy, a feeling sharp of mind, is like they were given to me to keep my mind in the illusion <clears throat> that it's me controlling my destiny. This is all going way too easily. It's like a cheap performance, but there is no way back. I need to finish what I started, and I can only hope that all that all will end with the best outcome. The dark girl came for me. I needed at least a few more minutes and I would have finished the ritual. Now I understand she could kill me at any moment, but for reasons unknown to me, she wasn't in a hurry. I wasn't as cunning as I thought. All the chances that I got were given from her. I don't know for what reason, but maybe she maybe she had some purpose. Maybe she was just toying with me. But now there is no turning back. I don't want to disappear like those dead bodies. I can't agree that my life will become so pointless. I can't accept this. I tried to block those thoughts, but they appeared in my head again and again. My entire part in this story is just to become another victim of these cursed woods. Big ol' bonfire. Alright folks, we're going to stop it for this episode. We are getting closer and closer. And we will pick up on the next one to finish, uh, which I believe we will be finishing the series out. So with that, please like, subscribe. Thank you for being a subscriber. If you are a subscriber, welcome to the Fair family. And I'll catch you guys on the next episode. So bye for now.